Well, thanks everybody for joining us today to the compensation and bonus plan that top producing agents are using to pay their team members. Wherever you're tuning in from, we know you're going to see a lot of value if you're looking to potentially introduce a new comp plan, right? And uh, we're super excited today. My name is Jeff Safaya. I've been with the company Ideal Traits for over five years now. I've had some very entertaining years. And, you know, we talk to agents a lot about, um, they're asking the question, what should I compensate? You know, what are the what are the best compensation packages out, out there? So what better way to share that than by introducing you to Kevin Mulnerick and Vlad. Um, Vlad, how do you pronounce your last name? Churchenko. <laughs> For, thank you, Churchenko. Yeah. <laughs> um, because they have, they've collaborated and they have some really good information and can bring you a lot of insight on really good compensation packages. Kevin, could you give a quick intro about your background and the success, success you've had in Allstate? Yeah, sure. Hey, thanks again for, you know, everybody watching this video and specifically glad, you know, uh, we, we've talked a few times and it's always a pleasure and, and, uh, and to dive in and, and get to the knowledge that you have is, is awesome. Um, so, yeah, I started an agency back in March of 2007. I started scratch, no policies and started with one employee and then kept quickly growing and growing. I realized that two was better than one and three was better than two. And then I started thinking maybe even locations, uh, two would be better than one. And then, so I opened one up in 07, 08, 09, 2011, and then 2014, all with zero policies. Uh, we quickly grew that to about 20 million in organic premium after eight years. And it's just been great ever since. Um, so being on the, uh, in the, we'll call it the, the inner circle there at Allstate, it had me speak around town, um, across the country, I should say. And they said, well, what do you do? Uh, how do you do it? And it really comes down to the people. And by hiring the right people, we're able to accomplish anything that we want. And with the wrong people, you know, you really have a hard time. So that's kind of started with Ideal Traits, how we opened that company based on using the assessment that I used to find great people along with my brother and other partner, Todd. So we had the same formula. We assessed everybody, got the right people, the right person in the right seat on the bus and move forward. And then so Ideal Traits have been around for eight years. We're helping thousands of agencies across the country. So it's been fantastic. And uh, with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to Vlad. Yeah, Kevin, thanks so much for the introduction. Um, it is interesting with, with what you got, what we got going, I should say we, because I've been here for so long, what we got going on with Ideal Traits and how specific we are to this industry. And then obviously you being an active agent, um, you know, and your, your comp plans and your knowledge, I think, you know, agents will get a lot of insight. Vlad, it's interesting with you too. Um, <laughs> I actually stumbled on Vlad's site. I mean, what, like three months ago, I had agents calling me and saying, hey, um, Vlad told me to uh, get with Ideal Traits. I'm like, who's this Vlad guy, right? Uh, everyone keeps saying Vlad, Vlad, Vlad. And sure enough, I look up your site and I see all the awesome content you had and how much agents trust in, your, in what you got going on. So um, that's the main reason that I think we partnered up and collaborated and got this going. So Vlad, if you could give some quick insight on um, your background, your passion, and uh, what you got going on over at Insur Insurance Sales Lab. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, I just want to mention to everyone who stays to the end of this webinar, uh, I think, Jeff, uh, you have an offer to make, a special offer. Um, That's right. A free offer uh, that uh, I think everybody should stay till the end for. Um, so if you're looking to hire good team members, make sure to stay to the very end to hear what that is. Um, my quick background is that six years ago, I was recruited by a State Farm recruiter to become a State Farm agent. And I was really close to signing the contract and becoming an agent. But as I was talking to agents, not just from State Farm, but all state farmers, independent brokers, and, and I asked them about their first two, three years of being an agency owner, I kept hearing the same exact thing over and over again. And what all these agents told me was that, Vlad, do not expect to make any money in your first year. And expect to break even the second year and really start making money your third year. And I thought there has to be a, uh, a different way to run an agency and uh, not have to go into major debt the first couple of years. And as I dug deeper and tried to figure out the root cause of what 
causes agents to go into debt the first couple of years, I realized that most agents are either a not compensating their team members correctly, where they're not uh, the team members aren't motivated to perform at a really high level, which is what we're going to talk about in today's webinar. And secondly, I realized that most agents don't have a good sales process in place. So what I decided to do was instead of opening up the doors to my own agency and opening up an agency hiring five, six producers, I thought, let me just work in an agency as a producer, get on the phone, sell, get to a point where I can write a hundred policies a month or a hundred items a month. And if I felt like, I felt like if I could do that in a span of 18 months, come up with a, uh, a sales process, then when I open up my own agency 18 months later, I'll just teach my staff how to do the same thing. Um, and to keep a long story short, it took me nine months to get to a point where I was uh, writing over 150 policies per month or over 150 items a month. And that's when agents started reaching out and saying, Vlad, we hear you have this good sales process. Tell us more about it. And then I started doing workshops, trainings, um, teaching agents and team members uh, my sales and referral process. And um, I'll be giving it away at the end of this webinar for free. If you want to see how the script works, um, I'll give you a, a preview of it at the end of this webinar. But for the sake of this training, what we'll concentrate on is paying team members. So uh, Jeff, I think you have a few questions to ask both Kevin and I. So let's go ahead and get this party started. Yeah, thanks, Vlad. And just to be really clear about this webinar, it's really about you guys tuning in. Um, you know, I think over on Vlad's side and our side at Ideal Traits, we get this question a lot, right? And we want to make sure that we're giving you the best information about how agents are producing um, so high and how they compensate their, and that's how they compensate their, uh, their top producers. So any questions you have, you can feel free to reach out on both ends. And I think Vlad will give you everyone their co contact information at the end, correct? Yes. Awesome. Starting out with uh, question number one, this is going to go to you, Kevin. What makes a perfect compensation plan? Well, perfect is a really high bar for sure. <laughs> and uh, I would say that all paid plans are always evolving as we continue to strive to get the best one. But there are some key components within a paid plan that I think that we all need to you know, consider. And you know, the, the big one is, is rewarding the high performers. Vlad touched on that a little bit. You know, it, be, it can become a problem in agencies as they're trying to grow and get started. And if you're not paying them appropriately, they're going to find another seat. And it may not incentivize them to sell as many policies. Now, at the same time, you really need to discourage poor performers. A poor performing um, agent is going to cost you a lot of money. Imagine real quickly, somebody pays $2,500 a month and they paid 5% commission, whatever it may be and you add it up, they only do $10,000, you're paying them 30% of the money. So we won't get dive, dive deep to, we won't dive too deep into that, but the reality is, is you need to know your numbers. Know what they are so you can know how to create uh, the perfect pay plan as you're gonna hear today. So, and then last but not least is keep it simple. You know, some of these pay plans I've seen are, you, you need a, a, a super calculator in order to figure out where you're at. And then on top of that, you gotta you know, look on 10 different pages. So keeping it simple, and that is what I really like about Vlad's pay plan that he's put together here and uh, that we're gonna hear more about. Yeah, Vlad, um, you know, when you show me this plan, it really like popped up in my eyes, right? Because it's modernized. And I think that's a big thing. And, you know, Kevin and I discussed this in a recent webinar with Everquote is we got to modernize our compensation packages, right? Across the board. So for a sales and CSR comp plan, can you show everyone what that looks like? And, you know, the, all this, basically the reasons why you have this comp plan? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, um, I'll go back to Kevin's, uh, the question you asked Kevin for just a second. That's um, when it comes to creating a comp plan, I agree with the two components that you, you brought up. Um, the only thing I would add is that at any given time, team members can look at the compensation plan as a, a motivator or demotivator, a motivator to produce at a high level or just yeah. be average. So what I have uh, created here and you'll see in the sales producer is a compensation plan that does not tolerate average performance. 
and definitely does not tolerate poor performance. So the way this is broken down is that there are three tiers and only three tiers that team members need to look at. And the tiers are based on the number of households a producer writes. Let me say that again. It's not based on premium. It's not based on apps or items or policies. It's based on households. So to define a household, we'll look at the right side of the screen here. Uh, if someone just switches their car insurance, that's not a complete household. That's not a whole household. That's just half a household. If they switch two, three cars to you, but they keep their homeowners with their current company, that's not good enough. Uh, that's considered to be half a household. If someone just switches homeowner's insurance or just the renter's insurance, but not the auto, that's also considered to be half a household. But when they switch both home and auto or home and renters, that's a complete household. Does that make sense, Jeff? It does. Okay. It does. L let's if, break it. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I, I think you're going to get to this, but a lot of, a lot of questions you know, agents have is if you recommend paying on written or issued. Yeah, it's uh, going to be based on, um, I'll, I'll save that question for just a moment. I'll answer your question once I do the uh, breakdown, but that's a good question. So if someone writes less than 10 households, so zero to nine for okay. that month, they don't get paid any commission. So Kevin, Jeff, if you're paying a $2,000 base or $2,500 base salary, that's all they get. They don't get any commission. So if they write nine households and uh, that's how they end the month, well, or nine and a half households, too bad, so sad. You don't get any commission. Once they cross that 10 household mark, 10 households, then they get paid 3% of the premium that they wrote. So if they wrote 20,000 in premium, they get paid 3% of that as their commission. Now, that, that top tier is 20 households. That's the highest commission that you can get. And that's uh, 7%. So if you write 20 households, 30 households or more, however many households, as long as it's more than 20, you get paid 7%. Uh, so two quick things to note that there needs to be a big jump between writing 10 households and 20 households. So I wouldn't do like 5% for this tier and then 7% for this tier because that difference doesn't feel like a lot when you go from five to 7%, but it's huge when you go from 3% to 7%. So I'll just say this last part before I give you a, a simulation that if these numbers aren't designed to be fixed, then you can't uh, change them. This bottom number, I would keep fixed. I wouldn't go up or down. I would just keep it at 3%. But this second number of 7% in premium, I wouldn't... Um, if you can afford to pay more than 7%, I know a lot of agents pay eight, nine, 10% already. I would pay a higher commission, but I wouldn't pay less than 7% because you want to reward the people who are writing a lot of business, 20 households. So let's see what that looks like in terms of a, uh, a monthly basis and what, how that breaks down. So let's suppose the producer writes five households for the month. That's what they wrote this month. An average household, let's say, is 2,500 in premium. Uh, that's supposed to say 12,500, is it not? <laughs> Do I have my math wrong? I have my math wrong. It's supposed to say 12,500, but close enough. Um, how much commission do they get paid if they write five household? Nothing. Nothing, because they're part of the, the first tier. So their commission is $0. So they just get their base of 2000 or 2500 this is just a suggested base pay so their monthly total is just 2500 over the course of a year that's 30k now you know I, I think this that's a good example too kind of what we were talking about earlier is that's an expensive person this yeah. is why you want to disincentivize and to realize the fact that this low performer you're going to pay 25% commission they wrote 10,000, you gave them 2,500. There's no other way around it. And what you'll find that most people might um, cons don't consider is paying at the higher rates of the premium is they're going to be more expensive. And the reality is it's going to be less. And I think Vlad can uh, help attest to that. Yeah, that's a good point. So um, let's, let's take that next tier of 10 households. Someone writes 10 households, that ends up being 25,000 in premium. 
how much commission do they get paid? Do they get paid zero, three, or seven based on this grid? 3%. 3%. So 3% of 25,000 premium is $750. So that's their commission check. They get paid $750 as their commission plus their base of 2,500. That ends up being 3,250 for the month. Not bad, not terrible, but not good enough for an A player. If you're an A player who's maybe driven by money, I think you would be pretty pissed off if you're always at that at that mark of less than 20 households. Now, let's see what happens when you get to 20 households. You do 20 households, multiply that by 2,500 in premium per household. That's 50,000 premium. Now you get paid 7% of that. That's the, the high tier. That's $3,500 that you get paid in commission, which is more than your base. So you add the two together, that's 6,000 in monthly pay. Over the course of a year, that's $72,000. So that, in my perspective, if I'm a producer and I'm doing 15, 16, 17, 18, or worst case scenario, I would do 19 households, I would be pissed off because the difference between writing 19 households and 20 is huge in terms of how much I get paid. So that's the... That's the uh, sales comp plan. Um, before we get to the CSR comp plan, uh, Kevin, what are your thoughts on this compensation plan? Things you like, dislike? You know, the things I really like about it are um, household. It's, re it's a really unique approach. You know, a lot of agents look at items, they look at premium, and, in, and you're paying off of it, but you're really getting them in the mindset to um, incentivize and to make it that the agency wins too. And some pay plans out there that agents receive from their carriers are based on their bundling package. So it's awesome to be able to take a look at that in a unique approach to do that. Uh, the other way is, you know, again, you, you go to the high side, the person who writes 50,000, they get a great salary, it's $72,000. You're gonna be able to retain them more. It's a lot more of a stable person in your agency and if you look at the premium again, now you're looking at 6,000 on 50,000, it's 12%. Again, to the point, it's less expensive to have a great producer. They're happier, they're making more money, and it just makes for an all around perfect package for your agency. And, and Vlad, you mentioned, I mean, producer across the board, an agent in any that has any carrier, farmer, state farm, independent, you know, we know that terminology, but as you go to the CSR, you know, so you talk to agents and some of them call it different types of roles, right? For farmers, I know they call it a customer service sales specialist, a representative, uh, an independent agent might call it account manager. And some agents have their own unique uh, name for it. Would this be a CSR that's also selling? Is that what we're getting to with this next uh, comp plan? Yeah. So I'll show you the, we'll call it customer service. Uh, we'll okay. lump all those titles in and I'll show you what can be done for a customer service representative. Now, um, what I'll show here is just a, a suggestion, but it could certainly be tweaked. So okay. this is for that, that, that customer service representative who, whose job is not to sell. Their primary job is not to make outbound calls and close deals. They're taking the incoming calls. They're changing vehicles, adding drivers, making, uh, taking payments. That's Processing. The, right. Um, okay. There's a different role, a third one where if, if you're a hybrid, you do sales and service, you're like 50, right. 50. and we'll discuss that in just a moment. But um, for a customer service representative, again, it's a three tiered system, zero to nine, 10 to 19 and 20 plus exactly the same as what we just saw on the previous comp plan. But this time you're not measuring households written, but you're measuring the number of referrals that that customer service representative gets. So picture this, Jeff, you call in, you say, Vlad, I'm calling in to pay for my policies. I process the payments. I say, Jeff, thanks so much for calling in. Have a great rest of the day. Enjoy your weekend. And we cut the, the, the conversation there, right? That's what happens in a lot of agencies is they, they just try to move on to that next call. Now, what if I stopped and said, uh, Jeff, before I let you go, I am curious. You know, we love working with you. You've been a client for a long time. We want to work with people just like you. Who else do you know in your community of friends family members, church members, co-workers that you could refer to us that we can work with as, as well and possibly save money on their car and homeowner's insurance. 
Who Glad I got two best friends that were just talking about how their insurance rate is too high. Do you want me to give you their numbers? Absolutely. Um, here's what I'll do. I'll go ahead and send you a text right now. The number that you're calling me from is a mobile number, right? Correct. Okay. That will include all of my contact information. Go ahead and text that information to your two friends and have them give me a call and uh, we'll see what we can do for them. So Love it. if I do that and I send you that text and I don't get a referral from you, then a day later, I'll follow up with you and say, hey, Jeff, just a quick text. Hey, Jeff, I uh, want to make sure you got my text from yesterday. Were you able to talk to your two friends, right? So if I, if I do that at the end of every call and I'm getting 20 calls a day, how many referrals do you think I can get on a monthly basis if I do that every single time? Like, Kevin would expect plus 20 for sure. <laughs> Knowing him, working at his agency and working at Ideal Trades for sure. Yeah, he would say 20 a week. But let's just say right. a, a person makes that a habit where at the end of every call, they ask for a referral. And not just one customer service rep, but every customer service yeah. rep. Like they're competing against each other who can get the most referrals. And they don't have to be the one who ends up quoting them. They can just send that over to the, to the salesperson. But the fact that they came in from my referral that's um, that needs to be recognized. So if you can generate, if you generate zero to nine referrals, or let's just call it less than 10 referrals, then same deal. You don't get paid anything on that. You have to be incentivized to do at least 10. If you can get 10 to 19, you pay that uh, CSR, we'll call them $10 per referral that they got. If they can generate 20 or more referrals and they get paid $30 per referral. Now, these numbers aren't fixed. You can adjust these however way you want. But um, like picture this. If I got, if, if I get, let me just rephrase this. I think most agents would pay a lot more than $30 to get an incoming call from someone who calls in and says, hey, Jeff, I got your number from so-and-so. I'd like to get a car and homeowner's insurance quote. And you're getting calls like that all day long. Kevin, would you pay $30? dollars per incoming call like that? Would you pay 40? Would you pay 50? How much would you pay? <laughs> well, you know, that would be an inexpensive way to, to get leads and knowing that referrals are going to close at an 80% higher, higher close ratio. Yeah. And why? Because if they call your office, they're looking to do business. They are looking and finding ways to actually do business with you. And you'd have to really screw that up to not close that business. So yeah. with that high rate, it certainly pays off. And the thing that I like about what you did here, Vlad, is that zero to nine is zero, just like the sales count plan. And you're sending a message. And the message is, this is a part of your job. Yeah. You have to do it. It's a part of working for our agency is asking for the referrals. And I would assume too, Vlad, with this too, could be a referral of a current client that you sell another line. They call in with a model line and you refer it over and that's a warm transfer right away. That, hey, Mr. Customer, I see here you only have auto. You know, we can lower your price right away. Well, how can you do that? Well, we just, all we need to do is add your home. Let me yeah. get you in contact with Vlad and he'll be happy to quote that out. Or, you know, while I have you on the phone, let's take a look and make sure you have all of the discounts and coverages you deserve blah, 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 you get down to the end and you find out, oh, you know what? An umbrella policy would be a great opportunity for you. Let me send you over to the sales department. So I would assume it would be another great way to get instant quotes along with some referrals of their friends and family. 1,000%, I'm so glad. I didn't even think about that, 1,000%. The other thing to consider here is it doesn't just have to be referrals. Maybe you're an agency who's uh, who wants to write a lot of life insurance. I know State Farm, all State Farmers uh, is very, like life insurance is a big deal for uh, the caps of carriers. What if at the end of every call, I could also uh, ask, I can say, Kevin, I see you have your car and renter's insurance with us, but you don't have life insurance. Who do you have your life insurance through? Oh, I have it through work. I overcome that objection. And then uh, we realized that, okay, maybe it does make sense to get a life policy. If I'm not licensed for a life policy for life insurance, I can transfer it over to a salesperson who is. Or if I am licensed, I can just give you a quote uh, and give you a presentation and say, okay, for car renters and life insurance is going to cost this much. 
How, how does that sound? You like it? Perfect. We start an application. We tell them that this is an estimated price. It's not a final price. Once we get the results from underwriting, then we can give you the, the actual price. But we want to encourage um, at least submitting a life application. So it doesn't just have to be referrals. It can be referrals or life insurance apps that you submit. So let's say someone does uh, 10 life apps per month and they generate 10 referrals per month. That amounts to 20 between the two. So that right. would put them at that top tier. Yeah. Um, or you might value getting Google reviews and say, look, for every Google review that you get, that'll count towards your 20. So I wouldn't do three categories. I wouldn't do referrals, Google reviews, and life apps because that can just get too much. Uh, I would just pick two. I would pick two, whether it's life applications and referrals or life applications or, or uh, referrals and Google reviews. So that's the general uh, setup. Now, when, as far as what this looks like on a monthly basis, we'll go through the numbers pretty quick. Someone does, gets five referrals, again, no commission. They just get their base. Um, I put $3,000 as the base. That's just an example. Someone gets 10 referrals for the month. They get paid a hundred bucks as a commission. Someone gets 20 referrals. Now they get paid $600 in commission. Now they're motivated and they know it's part of their job to ask for a referral every time, but they're getting rewarded every time they do so. So um, that's the customer service uh, plan. And I think if they're doing sales and service, like a hybrid, then I would do households as one of the metrics. And then the other metric that you got to look at is referrals. So households and referrals, but households must be one of them. If you're a, a hybrid between a sales and a service, does that make sense, Jeff? Because I think that was- Yeah, no, it makes total sense. And I love that. And that's why I wanted to ask Kevin here because, you know, working for Kevin at his at his agency and then working here at Ideal Trades, he firmly believes as well as me, like anytime you're on the phone with a customer, right, whether you're a salesperson or not, you always ask for referrals. So Kevin, after looking at this, I know you gave some feedback, but there's anything that you wanted to add or maybe like or dislike about this compensation plan? It, you know, again, it just rewards the top performers. Yep. And what I think is really key is when you bring a new person on is to get them started right away and getting them a taste of it. So they get in that habit and that ongoing um, uh, ritual of continually asking. And the only way you're going to do that is by checking up on them. I do have one little tweak to your life insurance is something that we had. And it's nearly the same. Just one thing would be, uh, we say, who do you have your life insurance with outside of work? So now we've already made the assumption they have it. It's okay they have it at work, but they also should have it outside of work. So it gets um, a little bit more response to that sometimes. So what oh, we I should. I agree. I need to look into that. Yeah. <laughs> I can um, help you out, Jeff. I know you can. <laughs> um, can we go take one step back there? Because I, I feel like there's one detail that uh, I want to make clear. Going back to the sales producer role with tracking households, I think we touched on this, but I want to go one step deeper. Kevin, how often have you seen, especially with new producers, a lead comes in and they say, hey, I want a car insurance quote. And they just give them a car insurance quote. And then they mention, oh, we can save you some money if we bundle it with your home, but they don't really push for it as hard as they should. How often does that happen with newer sales producers? Well, you know, I think that um, when salespeople start out, they typically take the path of least resistance. They think everything is going to blow up their deal. And so you can certainly see some pushback in, in that area. Um, and, and knowing to you and me and even to them that it's very obvious that you should ask and push for the close to continue wanting to go with the home. But um, again, in the beginning, and, and some people who are afraid to push forward, uh, they lack the confidence in doing it. And so what I like about this is it really kind of forces that it drives yeah. your agency to get the, that household bundling number up. Yeah. Cause they'll know that this person, like this is a done deal. We're saving the money in their auto insurance. Let's say all I need to do is just push a little harder to get the home. And now I get, got my complete household, right. not just a half a household. Um, and when we do that, Kevin, what happens when, 
most of your, your clients are getting both home and auto. How does that affect your retention in an agency? Do you have oh, any yeah. stats on? Yeah, it's a really profound effect. I mean, you know, there's a lot of agencies that I've heard of 75% on their auto, they might have 80% on their home, but you combine them and you get 90. And then you add an umbrella or life insurance and then you can get into the 95, you know, the mid 90s. So it has a massive effect on your, on your renewals. And the reason it does that is because when it comes time for renewal, it seems like a much bigger chore. I've yeah. got all of these policies, I'm tied in, I know them. I don't know if I wanna spend all of this time and effort to go get it all requoted. I might as well just stay. And so yeah. that's the reason it's, you're not easily dispensable. And that's why we like to keep all the dates the same date, the home and auto and umbrella and motorcycle, if possible, of course, is try to line them all up. That's awesome. And this is this section we're getting into is bonuses, correct, Vlad? Yes. So this brings me to my next question for you, because I think it's it's super important to know, like when we're talking to agents and agents always say, okay, what type of bonuses are we given? It's not always about money right? Money's awesome. Of course, everyone wants to be awarded with money, right? But there is an important thing here. And like, it's about personalizing and tailoring something to, to a, someone special in your office, especially if they've been with you for a while. So can we get into like personalized items and how important that is just giving some thought to an employee before you just give them a certain amount of money? I'm going to jump in here first. And we're because we're going to this this does center around Vlad. we talked about this. Uh, a few weeks ago, and I was yeah. really impressed with your creativity on this. Um, so I've adopted that, and we are going to be using that in 2021. So thank you for that. I am going to back up just a bit and talk about, you're right, Jeff, like it's not just about the dollar amount. Uh, what we've done in the past has really created some, a lot of creativity around what kind of a contest do you have. So okay. the, the typical is, I just pay on items or I just pay on premium. You get a little bonus at the end of the month. And we've done, you know, lots of different things. We've done it around talk time. We've done, done it around, you need three hours of talk time. We know that talk time is a, is a perfect correlation of writing business. We've done it on, everybody has to do the, uh, the same amount of talk time or nobody gets that bonus for the day and then it accumulates. We've done things that every item you write you get to shoot a basket. We've got a little mini basket in our back room and we have a lot of fun of that. We've got a massage chair in the back. I was about you to bring that one up. Policy with an umbrella, you get to get a massage. So I think the creativity in getting outside of the box of the typical, um, you know, if you write this items, you know, that's what you'll get. Uh, another one we did is, is around umbrella because what happened, you can't just write a standalone umbrella and maybe do a current client, but if you're writing an umbrella, it means you're writing the home and auto too. So now you're getting much more items, you're getting better retention. So getting really creative with the kind of contest. And now I'll turn it over to Vlad and how can we reward them when they accomplish these goals? Let's hear yeah, it. I, uh, I agree that gamifying it is what makes it super fun and interesting. I'll tell you my personal experience of how this came to be. As a producer, when I was working in the agency, um, State Farm has these incentives where if you write a certain amount of bank uh, policies, whether it's credit cards, auto loans, then you could get a bonus. So we had this contest in our office amongst the five producers that were there, where if we could each, like, who, I think the, I don't remember the exact details, but it was something like uh, whoever gets 10 credit cards in a span of two months, which is a lot of time, 10 credit cards, you get paid a thousand dollar bonus. Very doable. Like if you just ask every time you, you'll get, easily gets um, right. 10 credit cards. What was funny to me is that I was the only person who, who tried because at that time I was saving up for, uh, for a wedding and an engagement ring. So money to me was the most important thing. Like I don't care about anything else. I just want to get my, my big bonus. So I got that in two weeks. Whereas everybody else in the office at that time, they waited till the last week before they started trying. And no one ended up hitting that goal. And it made me think, how is it possible that no one tried that hard to make a thousand bucks? And then the, the, the fascinating part about that was the following month, our contest was, and it wasn't even for the full month. It was like, again, for uh, a couple of weeks where if we did something else, there was another contest in place, but whoever wins 
there was only going to be one winner. Whoever wins gets blazer tickets. So I'm from the Portland, Oregon metro area, and we have the Portland Trailblazers, uh, also known as the greatest basketball team of all time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, sure. <laughs> huge fan, right? I, and, it, and everybody else in the office uh, liked the Blazers as well. So the, the tickets that we were going to get weren't the best tickets, but they were 100 level. So probably a couple hundred bucks to, to, to get the tickets. So whoever, uh, whoever wins this contest ends up getting these tickets. I tell you, everybody worked their butt off to get these tickets because they knew that the item that they're going to get is something that they normally would not buy, which leads me to like this whole conversation of what happens when you pay someone a $500 bonus or a $1,000 bonus. Well, the first thing that happens is it gets taxed, right? So Kevin, you give me a $1,000 bonus or a $500 bonus. I don't keep the whole 500 bucks. It gets taxed. So, and then when I do get my say $400 after taxes, well, guess what? I'm married. I have kids. I'm not going to take that $400 and buy myself blazer tickets. I'm not going to take that money, buy myself something nice that I've been wanting to get for a while. What am I going to do? I'm going to take that $400, put it into our family fund, right? Pay for groceries, pay for all the things that we need. So yes, I feel like a winner because I'm contributing to our family's income in a greater way. But personally, I'm not getting that, that's a, a like personalized gift that I, or that item that I really want. So, which leads me to this. When, when you get a $500, um, in, instead of giving someone a $500 bonus, what is it that you can buy for $500? Or well, let me rephrase this. What is it that you can give to your team member that would be worth around $500 that you can give that item instead of a $500 bonus. Are you with me so far on that, Kevin? <laughs> or did I come- Absolutely. Okay. You know, so- the other thing too, not only the tax to them, but an employer is going to pay the employee taxes on top of the 500. It yes. It be 550 and then you only get 350, 400. So yeah. why give the money away? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So let's picture this. You have a mom that works in your agency, Kevin. Um, a, a 32 year old mom, she's married. She has two young children. The last thing that she will spend this $500 on is a new coach bag, right? She's right. not going to go to Michael Kors coach and buy herself a bag, even though she might be into that. She loves purses and bags. She always talks about it with the other girls and maybe guys. Um, but she's not going to go out and buy it because she's like, I'm not saying she shouldn't buy it, but that's not what most people do. What if you could give her a gift card, Kevin, for $500 that she, to Michael Kors or coach, that she can go and buy herself another purse. Like when she goes and buys herself that, that purse and you, you, you give her the gift card and say, look, because of you achieving this, whatever that this is, um, I'm giving you this bonus uh, and go, go treat yourself to a great purse. I know you always talk about getting uh, a coach purse. Here's $500 towards that that girl will probably ball her eyes out in your office and go buy herself a purse. And then guess what? The next party she's at, when the girls see that person, they'll, they'll know it's expensive. And they're going to ask her where she got it from. Well, maybe not that question because it'll be clear. She'll say, I got this for my boss. My boss bought me this purse. What's the next logical question that they're going to ask her? Your boss bought you this purse? Who do you work for? Why would he buy you a $500 purse? So the, I guess the point is that you it, it'll always put you in a position of someone who's, who's taking care of them outside of just giving them more money. So that, that's one example. Another example could be you have someone in your office that loves uh, cooking or they're always bringing, bringing a juice to work and you know they have this $100 Ninja Blender, but instead of doing that, you buy them a nice $400 Vitamix from Costco that they probably wouldn't go out and buy themselves. So you get them that instead of a $500 or instead of uh, just a bonus. You have someone in your office who is into fitness. They're tracking their calories, their steps, but they're wearing a four-year-old Apple watch. You upgrade them to the new Apple watch that costs a few hundred bucks, or you pay for their gym membership for the year. Like every time they wear that Apple watch, every time they use that Vitamix, every time they look at that purse, right. they're going to remember you. 
So, I mean, the list goes on of things that you can get, but the point is that you have to personalize it to the person that you're talking to. It could be an iPad. You know, someone's into music. You get them a $400 uh, uh, headphone set. They would, every time they put it on, every, every time they use it, they're going to think about you and how you gave it to them. Maybe you give them a, uh, a great spa experience for, for that person plus one, or that person's into gaming. They come home from the office and they jump on their console. If that's their thing, that's their thing. Maybe you buy them that new PS5 or whatever that thing is out that's out right now that everybody's crazy about. Uh, if they're into outdoors, you can get them fishing gear or a gift card to a sporting goods store. If they're into sports, maybe get them tickets to a game. If they're into cars, uh, I'm sure every big city has these tours where this company co comes, I don't know what it's called, but they bring in these supercars and you can drive them around the track uh, and it costs a few hundred bucks. So maybe you can give them that. It's not something they would pay uh, for themselves, but you would pay for it. So I guess the point here is be creative. Um, and it doesn't always have to be you that comes up with these items. Maybe you ask your office manager to sit down for 20 minutes and come up with, with a list of what every person would care about and give them options. So you don't just uh, offer one thing, but you give your producers an option of you can get this or that. So that's my perspective on uh, personalized bonus gifts that you can give instead of just paying a $500 cash bonus. I got something real quick, Kevin, because I know you're chomping at the bit to, to go here too. Um, Come up from an employee side, right? Um, I've been an employee all my life, and um, well, first off, I don't, I don't even have an Apple Watch, so upgrading that, that'd be super cool, Vlad. <laughs> but secondly, we're about to get company, uh, company swag here in a little bit for Ideal Trades, and because we just released a new logo, I believe, and I think it's in the works um, here soon, and we're about, it's about to be released. But I've been chomping at the bit, texting Kevin, check, texting our owners to get, to get some uh, clothes, right? And I would just say this, because I talk to agents about this a lot, and they're like, well, they just started. They don't really care for any company clothes. They'd rather have something different. To Vlad's point, it depends who you are. For someone like me, someone young, you know, you see it more and more. Um, people want to rep where you work. They want to take pride in it. So I would just say having uh, some merchandise, if you're a farmer's agent, if you're an independent agent, Allstate, whatever it is, find a way because that $30 shirt could be worth – to them more than $300. And I'm being serious just because from my perspective, sometimes that that's the kind of mindset that I have, but I just wanted to put my two cents in there. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it is great. A lot of times we'll do the all state swag where they can pick from an yeah. all state shirt or an all state jacket. And that's actually one of the contests we have for January. You've got it already mapped out for the year you can win uh, an all state coat. So um, it's, it's creative. It's unique. Here's the thing, guys. You got to get out of the box. You got to get yeah. out of the norm and create a great environment and a work uh, a work environment for your team so that they want to stay. It's engaging and you're getting creative with it. And I think Vlad, you did a great job with this. Yeah, that's awesome. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And to your comment um, on swag, Jeff, people <laughs> make uh, they don't make fun of me, but they poke fun because I I tend to wear the same stuff every day. You know, I, yeah. I'm not copying Mark Zuckerberg, but I just, I have five of the same black shirt, gray shirt, blue shirt. And I just go through that rotation because it's Isn't it easier that way though. Yeah. Yeah. So people <laughs> might look at me at the office and say, didn't you wear that shirt, that same exact shirt the last three days? Uh, it is the same design, but it's not the same exact it's shirt. Actually, I got four of those. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, and it's just one less thing to think about. And if it's branded yeah. to your company, like there's a logo on there somehow, then, you know, that's one less decision that your team has to make every morning. Again, it goes into making a good environment for your team members to work in, where um, not only do they get compensated well, but just the atmosphere in the office is just... Uh, Especially this generation coming right out of college. I tell you what, it's almost yeah. like a competition. People are literally like, Ooh, nice Bosh. Like that's cool. And he wears it all the time. I want to, rep, I tell Kevin this, I want to rep my logo, man. Yeah. Like I love it here. Right. Yeah, so yeah. I just think, you know, this generation, especially you, you go to events. Well, when events come back to life, you know, you're <laughs> seeing more people without suit jackets. Now you're seeing them rep their company swag. So yeah. I'm a big proponent of that. Yeah. Um, Kevin, is there any other important motivating factors you want to add in?
I know you talked a lot about it, but it was all really good stuff. Yeah, you know, we, we certainly hit on a lot of things. And, you know, like, like you have up here is, is public praise is really important. They need to feel good. They need to feel like they're a part of the team. They need to feel like Vlad said that there's um, uh, that we're actually right here that, you know, there's opportunity for growth. Um, in that, that younger generation, Jeff, that you're in and, and, and up and coming, they want to be a part of something. They want to be a part of a community. Yeah. They want to know that you are, are helping to improve the, the environment, the community around. Community and involvement, team, right. Team environment, a, a team, you know, a team concept. And that's tough in today's day and age, but we know uh, this day shall pass. And soon enough, we'll be able to get back out there do that volunteering, but in that office, when they do something right, and I tell my team all the time, you can brag to me, like brag to me, like please, like send me, send me the text, like it's okay. Bragging typically is not viewed as, as a nice thing to do, but to me, as my employee, I want you to, like I want to hear right. about that so that I can give you that public praise. Yeah, I love it. 100%. I think for a lot of people, if they're not like, if their love language is not gifts, but it's just words of affirmation. We, we know the five love languages. If whoever's watching this, if they don't know, uh, they need to look it up. Uh, yeah. But like, if my love language is words of affirmation, I would much rather have you, Jeff or Kevin come up and in front of everybody say, Vlad, congratulations on last week. You had, um, you had, uh, Asked for the sale 20 times. It's something you've been working on for the last few weeks. You finally got to 20 asks for the sale, and that resulted in five new households that you wrote. I want to congratulate you on that. Lunch is on me today. Uh, great job in doing that. Maybe not even lunch is on me, but just giving them that praise in front of everybody is going to be worth more than that $500 bonus that you'll give me because that might be something I'm missing in my life. So I think to your point, uh, Kevin, that's not something that can be overlooked. And A players, to go to your comments on opportunities for growth, you can pay me great bonuses. You can give me a great compensation plan. You can give me public praise all the time. But if I don't know where I'm going to be a year from now, two years from now, three years from now, if, if that vision isn't clear, it'll be hard for me to, to stay super motivated to continue to improve myself and improve my skill set. But if you have a conversation with me and you say, Vlad, if for six months in a row, you can do 20 households a month, then you'll be eligible to um, apply for our sales manager role at that time. And here's what that would look like. And you tell me about what that, uh, what that opportunity would look like. And if you can do well for another six months, then I'll go to bat for you to uh, State Farm or Allstate or Farmers, whatever company you work for, and you say, I'll help you become an agency owner. And uh, just seeing that, understanding that vision. I think for me, when I was a producer working from 8 a.m., I would come into the office at seven o'clock and leave often at eight o'clock. I would start making phone calls at eight, nine o'clock. Even though I hated the commute to the office and going back from, from work, especially since I took public transportation because parking was just expensive in downtown Portland. It, despite all those negatives, I was motivated like crazy to perform at a high level because my vision was 18 months from now, I'm going to have my own agency. 18 months from now, I'm going to have my own staff. But I, before I get there, I need to make sure that I'm an excellent salesperson, that I can write 100 policies a month. So that was my goal every day was get to 100 policies a month so that I can open up my agency and teach my team members how to do the same thing. So it was clear to me, no one needed to have that conversation with me. I just knew what I wanted, but that's not the case with a lot of other people. Sometimes you have to bring that out of them, sit down with them for 10, 15 minutes and ask, Jeff, what is it that you want to achieve in a year from now? Where do you want to be three years from now? Well, I don't know. Well, let's, let's dream. Let's talk about this out loud for a second. Let's, let's brainstorm this. We don't have to come up with a definite answer, but at least start that conversation so that when you're, when you're talking to your producer about doing 20 households a month, it's not just, hey, you better get to 20 households. Otherwise, you're not getting your high commission rates. It's, hey, Jeff, remember why we want 20 households a month, right? It's because of that sales manager role and then later become an agent. You can tie all of that in. So that's just my quick uh, two cents on um, 
to add on, on what you said, Kevin. No, uh, that's great. Really good. Sometimes we'll do, we'll ask them, hey, what motivates you? And then we'll have them create that as their screensaver. So now every day, all day, as a screensaver, the background, it shows what that item is that they're looking to do. And the screensaver can change, right? From yeah. time to time. Um, one last thing on this, Vlad, because I've been looking at a lot of webinars recently on this and, you know, humanizing the way managers are today is so important, especially with the pandemic, right? So finding out what's in it for them, how do they get motivated? And for our sales team and my sales team, you know, there's three questions that I've just implemented. It's one, you know, how do you think you're perceived, whether it's in the company or in, in life in general, you know, we go that deep Two, how do you want to be perceived? There's always something there. I'm sure you two could obviously uh, give me some things of how you think you're perceived and how you want to be perceived. And then three, what are the steps needed to take to get to where you want to be perceived in life and in professional life? And I don't know, I've been doing that with uh, my boss recently and it's, it's helped tremendously. So something to keep in mind too. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, genius. Well, and I think the, the one thing, you know, top, speaking of top performers, and what's inside of you is there's, there is a, you, you've got the right DNA, you've got the right ingredients, you've got the right traits in order to, you know, perform at a high level. And that's where it starts, you know, hiring that right person so that they understand and they have that drive inside of them to keep striving to get to the top. So you got to find that motivation and drive. And Vlad, we talked about a different couple different comp plans. I'm not trying to go back to that, but there was something we talked about and that's with an office manager. I know there's probably some agents maybe watching this uh, webinar and they, or this recording, they might be thinking like, okay, so you talked about CSR and producer. Uh, what about an office manager? So is there anything that you guys can give on that end? Uh, like, well, let's start with you, Kevin, because I know you had an office manager for your office that is just yeah. amazing. Um, maybe what kind of personality? And then like, how do you motivate them? How do you compensate them? Well, you definitely want a cheerleader, someone who's going to praise their team in public for sure okay. and show them where the opportunity for growth is. Um, but then you also want to have an incentive plan that's going to pay an override. So based on all of their team's production, um, incentivizing them in a way that it makes sense that everyone's pulling in the same direction. So that's really important. And then we also do an annual bonus just based on how, do, how are we doing overall? You know, how does that relate to the company goals? How does that relate to the agency goals and making sure that we're hitting all the numbers that we need to? Okay. And then to that, to when we talk about, you know, compensating and compensations, there's no matter how great of an agent you are, no matter how great of uh, an agency you're running, you're going to have chargebacks, right? So can you give a idea of what you guys do at your agency uh, on chargebacks? And Vlad, actually, you, you take this one first. I'll answer. Um, I, I want to add to what Kevin just said, if you don't mind. Yeah, uh, go for it. So, you use the term overrides, uh, Kevin, and I think most 99% of the agents do know, but for that 1% who might not know, um, if, if your agency writes 50,000 or 100,000 in premium, you're saying the office manager gets paid 1% of that, right? Or 2%, whatever that number is. So let's just say um, your, your, so my suggestion to that is also have it be tier-based for the office manager so that if the agency writes 99,000 uh, 99, in premium, that the office manager gets paid 1% override. But the moment they cross that 100,000 in premium for the agency for that month, then they get paid two or 3% as an override. That way the office manager is also incentivized to pull that team up past that 100K mark, or it could be 50,000. So different agencies, depending on how many team members you have, you would structure that differently, but there has to be a tier based system as well. Oh, um, I agree. Yeah. And, and again, three tiers, if they do less than 50,000 in premium, the sales manager gets no override. Once they pass 50,000 in premium, now there's a 1% override. You get to a hundred K in premium. Now the sales manager or office manager gets paid a two or 3% override. So it also has to be tiered. Um, your question on chargebacks, I think, uh, I'll just say that chargebacks should be uh, something that every agency institutes. So if, if I'm a producer working in Kevin's office and I wrote a policy five months ago and it cancels today, um, I don't know how you do it, Kevin, but I know a lot of uh, agencies, they'll pay the producer for the five months that the policy was in force. 
but that one extra month that was still remaining in that term, I need to be charged back for that. And you use a system to help you do that. Is that right? Yeah, we use agency Zoom. So it's a great way we can import all the reports and it just automatically uh, gives charge back right back to their agent number. And that's associated with them. And so we always uh, will charge back. We can't have somebody writing policies and having them fall off and then paying them full commission. That's not going to work out. And that helps them to write more clean business. That yeah. system is awesome. Take from an employee standpoint. Can we give a shout out to Agency Zoom? I know they didn't ask us to do this, but. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh well, like that. Oh, yeah, you would. You guys should yeah. check them out. They do a great job. Agency Zoom in less than 30 seconds. Who are they and what do they do? Um, Agency Zoom is a, is a management system. It, it, it helps to track your commission. It helps to track ALR referrals. It's got all kinds of information. You can set up your comp plan right inside it. And with just within a few clicks, your entire payroll or your bonus plan, whatever it is, will be calculated. They, they, they just do a phenomenal job. Yeah. So you're saying I shouldn't be using a spreadsheet to track commission? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keep it up, Vlad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so many agents still use spreadsheets. And that's oh, insane. man. Like we're yeah. in yeah, 21st century. Yeah, um, it's specifically designed for insurance agents. So yeah. it, it's a great program. Awesome. Uh, great. I'm glad we gave him a shout out. Uh, Jeff, what else do you have on your list of questions? Well, you know, and this is something that agents will ask me from time to time. And um, I've had experience this, you know, in my years as an employee, right? And I just feel like there's good ways and great ways for a manager or an owner to release a new compensation plan. But there's also some terrible ways, right? So Kevin, can you take a deeper dive um, and just give some like, I don't know, biggest biggest ways to, 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 to make sure you're delivering that the right way to your new employees or current employees? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I think, you know, some ways not to do it is just send out an email. No. Um, some ways not to do it is, uh, you know, I'm paying too much or we're not hitting our goals. You know, I think that you really need to know the why behind it. Um, so I would get the team together. Um, I would make it just the people that are affected by the pay plan. All of, everyone has to be in attendance and really go into the reasons why the current pay plan isn't producing the results that the agency needs to succeed. It could be in the bundling category, it could be in total items category, and, and then get into you know, the how. So how are we going to change that and what are we going to do in order to correct these measures and, and create a positive experience out of it. Let them know that this is a good thing that's going to reward the high performers. And it's also going to disincentivize those that, that aren't doing very well, that quite frankly could be dragging down the team and, and grabbing that, uh, dragging down some of our A players. So it can be done in a way. And, it, you know, I don't, the pay plan would be intended to, as I mentioned, incentivize the high performers and how they can make more money than they're currently getting now. So, Make it a make make it a fun time. You're saying don't let the employees play telephone. So tell a couple, and then they go tell other employees. And if they don't like it, they commiserate. No, that's, that's <laughs> the worst. Vlad, what's what's your take on it? That's good stuff, Kevin. Yeah, I agree. I think um, there's a company whose name I won't mention. That um, I think most companies, especially captive nowadays, they give you a higher uh, pay structure up front. Like when you become an agent for that company. You know, coming into it, you sign a contract that in the first two years, you don't get paid, uh, say, for example, 10%. You get paid a lot more on uh, as a commission. So you come into it, you have the math figured out. You know what you're going to get paid. So when you hire your producers, uh, I think a lot of these first-year agents are super desperate to bring someone on board. So they pay crazy commissions because they can afford to do that because they're getting paid well. But there's never that expectation set from day one that a year from now or two years from now that, that this commission structure is going to change. So this person might come in and they'll produce well for a year and then they'll have a sit down conversation with their agent where the agent says, well, my commission just changed. So yours has to as well. So I think a couple of ways that you can do this is a either be upfront and say, look, this is where we're going to start. But in a year from now, it's going to be a different comp plan. 
Um, but by that you're by that time, a year from now, you're going to be so much better. You'll be writing so much business that that extra two, 3% that you get paid won't even matter because uh, you'll be writing a lot more business. So you can do it that way or just use the compensation plan that we discussed earlier today in our call and uh, keep that same comp plan all around. And I think what we should do in our next webinar, gentlemen, is maybe break down these numbers and show the return investment. Because I know both of you are are uh, math nerds like I am, where we can sit around and play with spreadsheets. And Not as big as you, though. <laughs> <For sure. laughs> no, I, just don't know. I don't know. Um, it, maybe we could break that down and show how does this comp plan actually uh, pan out in terms of ROI for, for the agents. Are you guys cool with doing that? I would love to do that. That's a great idea. And, um, you know, I, so personally I opened up five scratches that had the enhanced compensation and I just paid the same because I didn't want to face that day to say, you're going to get a pay decrease. Like you, you might say it sounds good now and, you know, we'll kick the can to later, but that never will go well. Yeah. They, they just won't enjoy the thought of getting reduced commission, um, getting paid less, or they have to do more in order to get less. And the other negative piece to that is what it'll do to some people, hopefully, you know, if you don't hire the right person, is they can do less and feel comfortable. So now you train them that less is okay because you're paying them an absorbent amount on that premium. The reality is, that extra commission has just helped to run the agency. It's helped to get the agency up and running, to pay for the build out, to uh, pay for all the computers and everything you need and the insurance and, and the payroll to cover all of the expenses and not just look at it as an individual. Yeah. And that's great. And you know, all the whole, it's interesting, the whole recording, we've, we've really been talking about high performers and low performers, right? Yeah. Um, so when agents talk about like, okay, so how do you get more high performers than low performers? Or how do you get people that want to work at all? Right, Vlad? <laughs> how do you sure. get people that want to work at all, especially yeah. in a, a tough market, right? So that's actually where Ideal Trades comes into play. And uh, Vlad and I were talking and Kevin, and what we want to do is give anyone who actually joined this webinar a free trial. So what we're going to do is if you hop on here, right, Vlad, um, what we did is made a deal with you that anyone who accesses it this link will get a free trial. Get on there. If you're looking for staff in the next two or three months, do it now and start building that pipeline. Use the assessment. And if you need any more information besides just, obviously it's a free trial. You don't get, you don't, we don't need a credit card. If you need more information before doing that, give us a call. I mean, we're here with you and can give you as much information as you need. Yeah. I'll include the, the link will pop up and we'll tell agents where to go, but let Perfect. me just say this real quick that, uh, uh, but a month ago when you reached out to me and you said, Vlad, uh, are you hiring right now? I said, I'm not, but I will be in a week. Uh, you kind of twisted my arm and you said, you got to try out Ideal Traits. And as you know, I was using a different platform at that time. I knew about Ideal Traits, but I had this other platform that I've had for so long that I just kept using. And you're like, it made me sick. It made you sick. <laughs> um, I, uh, I, I thought, you know what? I, I love Ideal Traits, but I haven't personally used it. I've only yeah. helped a, a few agents set it up. And uh, I thought, okay, let me just give it a try. And I kid you not, in the first week, and I could pull up the reports to prove it to you, but I had uh, more than 50 applicants. If there's like 51 or 52. In the first week, I had over 50 applicants come through. And out of those 50 applicants, as you know, with the system, uh, every person is required to take an assessment. And then the way I customized mine was, Every person who applies has to answer five written questions about their background. And I ended up doing two interviews with, with great candidates and hired one of them who just started with me last week. So that's, that's just awesome. a testament. And here's the crazy part. Here's the crazy part. It took me less than 30 minutes from the time that I created my login to the time that I published my jobs. Less than 30 minutes. And the next day I already had like 20 some applicants come through. It was ridiculous. So the immediate ROI on that was, was crazy because what's the alternative to ideal traits is I go to indeed post a job, pay them money to boost it. And there's nothing wrong with that. But what I like about ideal traits is that it streamlines the whole process. So out of the 52 applicants that came in, a good number of them took the assessments and they answered my questions that I had for them. But 
I didn't like any of them. I just deactivated all of them. My, the two that I really liked, I ended up uh, setting up a call with them and, and doing a, a, a Zoom call. So I'm a believer. I uh, have converted to the ideal trait uh, platform. So that's going to be my uh, platform of choice. And I'm more than happy to uh, put my name behind it. So I, I know that typically you guys don't do trials. In fact, I think it, this is the first time uh, this month is the first month you've ever offered a trial. Is that right? In the eight years or 10 years you've had ideal traits? Yeah, absolutely. The okay. first month ever. And, you know, it just gives them a taste. And what we really like them to do is, you know, assess your stat. Like you can see what it is and then we can go from there and show you how you can rinse and repeat. But just how simple and easy it is to know more and go deeper about each one of the candidates that apply. That's and they're awesome. freaky accurate. Vlad's yeah. going to take one probably today. Hopefully yeah. I'm going to bug him. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've been meaning to do that. Um, okay. Uh, anything else you got, Jeff? Well, I just want to give you some praise. I mean, here's the thing. Like I told you in the beginning of this and I, I'm super, I'm not going to say skeptical, but when I check out vendors, I got to make sure I'm recommending the right thing to my agents. Right. Because if I'm not recommending the right thing and they come back to me and say it didn't work, I mean, right. that's my reputation. It really is no matter how you skin the cat. So um, I had agents calling in, like I said, and I'd ask them, oh, how'd you hear about us? And they kept mentioning this guy, Vlad. And it got to the point, Vlad, I'm not kidding. I'm like, who is this Vlad guy? Like, who is he? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I look you up and sure enough, I think like after I checked you out, I saw a bunch of Facebook ads. I'm like, I gotta, I gotta chat and I gotta give him a call. And that's when we collaborated and teamed up. And I just feel like anytime you sign up, uh, I don't know if you, you sign him up or you just, you connect with an agent, you build a ton of trust like that agent. And I take, I, I give you a lot of praise because that agent absolutely loves what you do. They're always coming back to you. And they tell me on the phone, like, Hey, I'm not, I'm always going to use Vlad. He is the best. He's given me great advice. And, um, I just want to say like, you know, from an outsider looking in, it's something I'm going to recommend because if you can give them, um, that much value, that's something we want to do here at ideal traits, obviously too. So I'm, I'm glad we're collaborating on this, this Thanks. webinar. I need to have you around more often. It gives me yeah. this additional confidence boost. Uh, Jeff. Uh, so I, I, uh, thank you for that. I'm just kidding. Appreciate so, it. So for people who want to check out my sales script, and I think that's the um, that's the bonus that I want to give away, the six-step script for the one call close. If you want to see exactly how the script works, uh, how I was able to write 150 policies per month consistently, how a lot of other agents across the country do uh, as well, then go ahead and click the link below this video. You'll be taken to a page where you can register to watch uh, a 90 minute webinar in that webinar, I'll break down the six steps. And I think to go to your point, uh, Jeff, it's not a, a sales presentation. It's actual value. You'll walk away from that webinar, um, with actual scripts that you can implement right away. So I enjoyed this conversation. Thanks for much. Uh, thanks so much for setting this up, Jeff. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And just to be clear too, it's even a brand new agent, right? Brand new agents right away. You're, you're helping out as well. Correct. Yeah, brand new agents okay. or agents who are already super successful. If you want your team to sell more, specifically auto, homeowners, PNC policies, check out the webinar. Um, I think you're going to pick up a lot of great insights from it. That's great. Awesome. Well, hey, thanks for your time, Vlad. Thanks for joining us. Always great to connect with industry experts in the field. And uh, it's been a really good conversation.